our society suffers from serious epidemic. Millions of people suffer from a number of chronic conditions. Millions of people daily suffer from insomnia, chronic pain, and various mental health conditions. Let me ask you guys, how many people of you ever suffered from insomnia? Raise your hands. And pain, it could be anything, headaches, back pain. How many of you guys have parents who on a daily basis have to figure out how to overcome their headaches or low back pains or insomnia or a little bit of depression or anxiety? The numbers are staggering. And unfortunately, pharmacological traditional medicine is not the answer. For example, sleeping pills. There are millions and zillions of people in the United States alone who are dependent on sleeping pills. But the reality, the research-based reality, is that sleeping pills do not induce the natural state of sleep, which is absolutely essential for human health. Instead, most sleeping pills simply shut down your brain and give you just a little bit of rest. And this way, they prevent you from actually getting the natural sleep that most people, especially with chronic conditions, badly need. Moreover, many patients start suffering from various side effects and gradually develop dependency. Something similar goes for painkillers. They are very useful short term, as I am sure we all know after seeing a dentist. But long term, they are very much dangerous. About 10 years ago, I became a patient myself. At the time, I was a graduate student at Harvard Medical School working on my thesis in sleep medicine. And ironically, I started suffering from insomnia. I couldn't sleep for days and then weeks. I tried everything. I tried running. I tried martial arts. I tried meditation. I tried yoga. I tried red wine. When the red wine didn't work, I switched to white wine. That also surprisingly didn't work. Then I tried pills, all kinds of pills. Then at the end of the day, I found myself in my bathroom in a hot tub, because supposedly internet says that's a good thing, with, in a warm tub with a red wine to the right, white wine to the left with antihistamines in the middle, trying to do yoga. Well, don't try this at home. I beg you. Since that time, I started researching and trying to develop non-pharmacological methods to overcome insomnia and then other chronic conditions. Initially, first of all, just to help myself. And today, I would like to share my experience, especially the experience within th the past three years when I created a nonprofit called Healing War Scars, and we started working with veterans in Ukraine trying to provide assistance to veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress symptoms. And we managed to successfully work and resolve many conditions, including panic attacks, anxiety, depression, various kinds of pains, insomnia. And we have been doing so without pharmacological treatments. But moreover, I would like to share with you a vision for what I think of as a medicine of future. It's the kind of medicine that just doesn't just rely on pharmacological treatments, but also works comprehensively with the entire human being and effectively and successfully treats many chronic conditions. The first fallacy of a modern clinical medicine is this concept, if something is wrong with me, if I am sick, then all the physician needs to do is to affect my biochemical pathways. And of course, the best way to do this is simply by giving me a pharmaceutical that will affect these pathways. Well, modern research in medicine actually points to something very different. 
based on this research, we know that our health is composed of a number of factors. And this is psychological, emotional, social, and physical health. Let me start from physical. For example, my posture. So if I spend my life like this, and I invite you to join me, because I think if you stay in this posture for two minutes, uh, why are people straightening up? That always happens. I go like this, and everybody thinks, oh, I'm slouched all the time. I need to straighten up. He's going to see me. Well, do slouch. I invite you to slouch and see how you feel inside. Well, actually, research shows that slouching affects our mood. We become more sad, a little bit more depressed. Then we become less likely to engage with other people. The next thing we know, we become lonely. And guess what? Other brain of, uh, uh, line of research shows that when we become lonely, we are more likely, our physiology more likely to enter a state of pro pro-inflammatory state that predisposes you to a number of chronic conditions. Now, if I go to a physician, are there physicians who are actually going to pay any attention to my posture? Absolutely not. The same goes for muscle tissue. Physicians are not trained to work with muscle tissue. Nobody is going to ask me, I, do you have a little bit of tightness? No, not really. Now let's go to psychological factors. How many of you guys have done something in the past that you feel sorry about? I certainly have. Well, the way we deal with it is that we try to move away, we try to repress it, we try to forget it. As a result, we are not whole, we are not integrated. So our neuroendocrine system sort of start, keeps fighting. We still have memory of what we have done, but we still cannot process it. And that puts consistent stress on the nervous and endocrine system. Another factor, can you hold on to your beliefs and values even when society tries to push you in a different direction or you succumb to the pressure of the society? Do you have meaningful life? Do you have goal in your life? Not just financial goal, but a deeper goal. Do you feel that there is a reason, a deeper reason, a calling for you to live this life? All of these factors actually have direct impact on your physiology. Can you express your emotions? And can you express your emotions not to harm other people, but actually to connect to them in a very much meaningful way? In social health, do you have positive, affectionate relationships? Do you have nurturing, intimate relationships? Or are the relationship? Do you feel that you actually contribute to the society and that society actually values it? So all of these factors social, psychological, emotional, physical, they actively affect your health and they may either prevent or predispose you to developing chronic conditions. And the same applies to people who already have chronic conditions, incurable at this point chronic conditions such as, for example, diabetes. If you work with these factors, you can dramatically, tremendously improve patients' quality of life. But unfortunately, this is not part of the modern clinical medicine. There is no drug that I can take that will improve my posture. There is no drug that I can take that will actually release tension in my muscle tissue. There is no drug that I can take that will connect me to my inner calling or to the dreams that I had during my childhood and those dreams that I may have forgotten about and repressed. So pharmaceutical industry understands that there is no place for it in this paradigm. Pharmaceutical drugs are, are extremely important for modern medicine, but there is a huge opportunity to develop new treatments which are not pharmacological. 
So how do we work with all of these factors to improve our health? And here comes the key point. Whenever you don't have one of these factors, your neuroendocrine system shifts out of balance and you start sensing that something is wrong. So for example, when you have a job and you're not satisfied from the job, there is something wrong. There is something uncomfortable. There is certain discomfort. When you have a conflict with your loved one, there is a certain discomfort. So this is an absolutely fundamental, very simple point that, that is hugely important. Whenever your endocrine and nervous system are not getting what it wants, it tells you through a certain discomfort, but you have to be able to listen to this discomfort and to detect it. Now, I could say that all you need to do is simply tune in, start listening to the sensations floating in your body and changing your behavior and you'll be fine. And then I can end the talk. And that would not be true. Because for decades, we have been suppressing this system that is meant to keep us healthy and most of us cannot use it. And this is exactly what we are doing. This is exactly our pathway to treating many of the chronic conditions without actually treating them. All we do is we reinvigorate and we make this behavioral self-regulation system alive again. The way it works is that you have receptors spread out the entire body that detect physiological state of your body, such as pH, blood pH, acidity, presence of certain immune factors. These signals are sent through your spinal cord to your brain, and there are two brain areas. One detects whether you like or dislike something, and the other tells you what impulse you have. Then these signals converge to motor cortex that directs your skeletal muscles to actually start acting and behaving. The problem is that we are constantly suppressing what we like and what we don't like. Ideally, we need to try to take what we like and reject what we don't like. Just think for a second in your mind about your life, whether you're actually doing that, whether you're trying to take what you like and reject what you don't like, and whether you're completely aware which things you're actually like and which things you're actually dislike. The problem is that we have been suppressing it for way too many years. And this is exactly what we are trying to work with. Now, here is an example of how we do that. Here is Jack. He has been suffering from insomnia, depression. He has been through a number of doctors without much help. Now, he's going to learn to work on every single spot in his body. There is nothing magical about this. The spots, these are not acupuncture spots. He's going to learn to apply pressure on the spots. So here is one example. He works on a spot that has no pain. He applies pressure on the spot, and gradually, he starts feeling certain sensations. He starts feeling pain. He discovers that he has hidden pain. And actually, most of you guys, I can guarantee, have dozens and dozens of hidden painful spots. The problem with the spots is that they continuously overstimulate your nervous system and interfere with quality of your sleep. So as a result of this simple exercise, we heal one little spot at a time. And as a result, his entire nervous system relaxes. Now the next step, he continues to work on the same spot, now the healed spot, and he feels an urge to work on his lower back. He becomes aware of the urge, and he changes his behavior, he moves in order to actually work on this spot. And that trains his nervous system to A, detect an impulse, a desire, and actually then change his behavior to implement that. So next step, he starts working on this spot and suddenly he feels referral to different spots. He starts feeling different sensations and while observing his sensations, he notices sadness, emotions start coming up. 
gradually therapist engages him, creates a safe space, and helps him to overcome, to resolve these emotions, to understand where this is coming from. The thing is about clinical medicine that when I tell physicians that by putting your hand on a patient, you can actually evoke certain memories, physicians unfortunately don't know that. They simply don't have time. They have 10 minutes to treat you. Now, next step, he starts exploring by adjusting pressure, he starts exploring what kind of sensations he has. It could be warmth, it could be vibration, it could be different intensity. And he realizes that while usually you either have no sensations or pain, he realizes that there is an ocean of sensations floating within him. Now, the way it helps him is that usually we are living in our brain. We are either regretting something from the past or worrying about the future. When you're connected to your sensations, you are actually starting existing in the now and in the here. And you understand that everything flows and changes. Your internal sensations flow and change. Many depressed patients complain of emptiness inside. Now imagine that this depressed patient actually works one spot at a time and starts having pleasant sensations while his symptoms start disappearing, especially when he feels pleasant sensation. Imagine that your body suddenly feels with little generators of pleasant sensations. It doesn't have to be sexual. You actually ha can be comfortable within your body you actually start understanding what it means to love yourself because a number of psychologists keep saying, well, it's important to love yourself. Now, I know what I need to do to change oil in my car, but I don't know what I need to do to actually start loving myself. Well, the answer is very simple. Loving yourself is about being comfortable with yourself. When you are not with your friends, with your books, with your comfort food, you're just literally comfortable within your body and this is how you start loving yourself and this introduces a tremendous change and relaxation of the entire nervous system and affects your endocrine and immune system as a result the person becomes alive we re recently had an 80 year old woman who didn't use cosmetics for the past 30 years suddenly she comes to class all dressed up and with beautiful lips. And we asked her what's going on, and she said, well, I started listening to what I want, and I, started be, I, f I felt like I am alive again. And this is the trick. We, mo many of us live the life, we just exist. But we have a choice not just to exist, but to be completely alive. And to keep, be completely alive, you need to be aware of what you like, and what you dislike. And you need to try to take what you like and reject what you dislike. And then when two people who are in connection, when I am in connection with myself and you are in connection with yourself, when we come together, we can actually create inclusive society. The society that does not rely only on the rule of law the society that doesn't prompt us to suppress our feelings, but the society that creates connection between people. Thank you.